Yup, it's coming. The hard part is over. It's finally January, and as many of you guys know, that is when MLB The Show news is first going to hit. And a lot can be said about MLB The Show 24. It's a pivotal release. While MLB 23 did stay high in the sales margin, public reception has been at its lowest since presumably 2018. So let's talk new features, things that will greatly improve the game and make MLB 24 truly something special. But first, a quick word from Underdog Fantasy. It's the dead of winter, but Underdog Pick'em Slips are far from dead even in the baseball realm. Right now, you can make season-long predictions on how many home runs is Shohei Otani going to hit, or Cincinnati Reds Phenom, Ellie De La Cruz, how many stolen bases will he get? A little trick of the trade. Injuries happen. A lot of these numbers appear quite high. I've made a couple of slips where I'm a little pessimistic. I'm betting the under, and uh, we'll wait and see. But you guys can use my promo code GOMES. You're going to get a $100 deposit match on your first deposit. Now is a great time to start with Underdog Fantasy. And thank you again to them for sponsoring the channel. Let's start with the big one. Sets and seasons. If there's one thing that you heard constantly that people did not receive well in MLB 23, it was the new way that content was released. Sets and Seasons was a pretty innovative concept. As you can see right here on season six, it's back to every card being eligible, but for the majority of the season, certain cards were locked as their set no longer fit current requirements for main game modes such as ranked seasons or events. As you can imagine, it becomes quite frustrating to grind through full programs for cards that you still own, but you can't really do a whole lot with. And naturally, with this new system in play, it pretty much crushed any sort of live series content or lower overall cards past the first month of release. I don't think it's any coincidence that the first month was the best received within the entire calendar year of MLB The Show 23. People enjoyed being able to use cards that weren't superior at everything. And I truly think that the best way to go about this is mixing in the power creep alongside sets and seasons. And how do you do that? Well, you be more restrictive. That might seem counterintuitive, but I do think that's the best way to go about it. The incentive to play these Diamond Dynasty or Madden Ultimate Team game modes is primarily driven by building a better team. And my idea is exactly that. Each season, you're going to start with a low overall team. I'd list each season to last approximately two months as it did in the real MLB The Show. And throughout that two month time, you're going to go from 80 overall gold cards all the way up to 99s that you usually would only see at the very end game of MLB The Show. And you might say, wow, that sounds exactly like what they did. What a novice concept. Well, the biggest issue with the sets and seasons in my eyes was that within the next season, you already had that built-in 99 overall team. When you're already in the end game, there's nowhere to go. There's no way to go up. So at that point, you're losing motivation to play. So at the beginning of each season, I would do a complete wipe. You still own the cards. You can still use them in offline game modes. You can use them in events, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But for ranked seasons, it's only current set. And you're going to start again with the low overalls. You're still having the team building aspect while allowing for new faces to dominate the meta throughout the year, not using the same cards ad nauseum. But you have to be rewarded for that. If you grind it out the first season until wit's end, you should receive something for it. That time should not be completely lost which was much of the issue with MLB The Show 23. And I'd look at Head Start Rewards. That's a great place that you could do it. Really give benefits to people that played your game. Give lots of free packs, give lots of free stubs, things that are going to make people want to keep playing because everybody's story's different. They might have more time in season one than season two, but they should still get credit for what they did earlier on in the year. Captain cards and theme teams also were circled around a lot of controversy. The idea was quite cool. A lot of people appreciated that they added this in, 
but the implementation was a little lackluster. One thing that I would definitely ensure that they do is if you have a captain, it can boost anybody that ever played for that team like David Ortiz. He would still get a boost from this Twins Ron Carew captain, regardless of what jersey he's wearing on the card. This is going to help not having to give out 599s of the same player in different jerseys just so they can fit theme teams. And I do a better job of encouraging people to use theme teams because I really think that became lost within the year. If you look at Rod Carew, it's saying 10 hitters out of a possible 13 to receive the boost. I would make it so in order to get the full boost, you have to use an entire team, but they are not set restrictive. If you use a theme team, such as the Twins team captain, sets are basically gone by the wayside, encouraging people to use their favorite teams and not just the top cards at the meta. Another thing I would change is events. I think the game mode is incredibly stale at this point. It hasn't changed really at all since MLB The Show 17 or 18 when it was first introduced. And I think it needs a big overhaul. Not only were the rewards this year very poor, I would suggest something more akin to Madden Ultimate Team. Their house rules that they have, different scenarios that make the game more entertaining. Specifically within baseball, there can be an event where you're starting in the top of the ninth inning. It's a tie game, so it might be a one inning affair or it could go further. Or maybe we get really fun with it, where the bases are loaded as soon as you load into the game. Tied up, see who can score more runs in one inning. Because as it sits with events, it's basically became a moonshot simulator that they just recycle that same idea once a month or it becomes ranked seasons light, just a couple cards that you can't use and the innings are reduced from nine to three. It needs help. I also thought the core card implementation was pretty poor this year. One of my favorite things about MLB The Show that we've seen for years and years is the tops cards that we collected as kids. You get to see them digitally brought back to life in a card that you can use in the game. I want more of these, and I understand that they're lower overalls, but flesh out collections. We should have more than two instances where there's rewards for collecting these cards. On top of that, I'd love to see them implement a rookie to prime iteration. Kind of like what they did back in MLB The Show 16, where essentially you'd use this rookie card, you'd grind stats with them and get an upgraded version. I'd also love to see them differentiate cards so they don't all feel identical because as it sits with this 99 from day one system that they've put in place, everything feels the same. The quirks, pretty much all the cards have the same quirks and attributes, are basically all the same. You're looking at a different name in a different jersey with a different swing. I think adding more quirks to differentiate these guys, maybe Ken Griffey Jr. could have a quirk specific to him for robbing home runs. Or a shifty base runner like Ricky Henderson has specific slide animations that make it easier to steal bases. I think changes like that would really go a long way to help keep the game fresh and not just have it sit at the same stalemate that caused problems for MLB 23. I do want to touch on gameplay, and I'll be honest, I think gameplay is mostly fine. I don't think that was really the cause of concern with this year's title. I think batting is in a pretty good spot right now. Again, I thought it was at an even better spot earlier on in the year when we use cards that weren't superior at everything. A big issue you run into is max speed outfielders tracking down everything that is not hit over the fence. That became a problem not just at endgame, but all year. Pitching can be frustrating. I do think that the par, the perfect accuracy region with pinpoint pitching could be improved. Specifically, I would scale the par reading to be a little bit more precise, where 100% accuracy on the feedback is going to perform better than 90% accuracy on the feedback. Because as it sits, as long as it registers as perfect input, it's going to go somewhere within that perfect accuracy region 
region, the par. It should be tuned. The better you are, the more finite it will be placed. And a big one. For ranked seasons and competitive style game modes, you should not be playing in ballparks like Costco Stadium. Battle Royale, I think it's completely fine if you want to get stats with it. It makes sense to me, but if you're playing in a competitive atmosphere, max elevation is really not going to allow for the best competition. Overall, I thought MLB 23, it had things going for it, but ultimately it had a lot of things going against it as well. I'll stick to the fact that the launch was very good. The launch of MLB The Show 23 made it seem like there was a lot of promise and potential in the current concept that they had in order. Unfortunately, it just got stale very soon and we stayed there and didn't really improve from there. So I think a lot of these ideas would help exactly that. It's still down the same vision. Like I do understand the sets and seasons concept. I think it definitely can work, but there's gotta be some fixes to it and this is how I would do it. So. I would guess we are approximately two to three weeks away from hearing the cover athlete. It's typically the beginning of February and a little before then they'll start giving out teasers and there's a lot to talk about between now and then and once the tech tester, the beta hits in that February. So I'm very excited for MLB The Show 24 and I hope that you guys are as well. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Keep in touch for everything related to MLB 24 and thank you all for watching this one.